welcome to another episode of Real Women, where we talk about the real issues facing modern day Catholic women and how we navigate this journey with grace and purpose. My name is Von Hosking. And I'm Karen Doyle, and you are watching Real Women. In today's episode of the Real Women series, we're going to be exploring, I think perhaps our favorite topic, mm -hmm. and one that is absolutely crucial in the lives of women. And that is the topic of sisterhood and how we as women need and can grow meaningful connections and friendships. Sisterhood is essential to the soul. It's an irreplaceable, vital component to the formation of women. Absolutely. And I think our relationships with men are really important. Yeah. But nothing gives meaning and context to our lives like those bonds that we have with other women because there's what we're going through resonates yeah. with them in, and they understand, I guess, our struggles and our journey in a unique way. So to help us unpack this topic today of sisterhood and the need to build meaningful connections and relationships, we're joined by Jess Schepes. Jessica Schepes has been married to her husband for 10 years, mother of two children and lives in Melbourne, Australia. She works part-time as a web developer. Jessica enjoys reading, quiet time when she can get it, and being around friends and family. She has a powerful story of how sisterhood brought about restoration and healing in her life. So welcome, Jess. Great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's wonderful <laughs> to share this couch with you. I know, yes. <laughs> So fantastic. Now, you've had an interesting journey with this idea of sisterhood and also building meaningful friendships. But before we dive into that, can you give us a little bit of background about your life and how you came to be here today? I grew up practicing Catholic. I'm one of three siblings, the middle of two boys. You know, we went to mass every weekend, you know, and I was seven years old when I was plucked out of the congregation by the beautiful sister Helen, asked if I could sing, and I said, I think so. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and um, then the next week I was I joined the choir and um, up until last year I had I was still involved so a good 30 years wow. um, which was um, amazing yeah and then um, I think my faith really catapulted when I attended World Youth Day in Cologne in 2005 I came home with my heart burning with love for Jesus. And I just remember seeing joy, absolute joy in everything. My heart was just bursting. And um, that feeling stayed with me for such a long time, um, you know, and then I was able to learn a little bit more about the faith, you know, and mass meant a lot more to me. And then, you know, I met, um, and then after that, I was invited to my old high school, Santa Maria, to share my experience at assembly about my World Youth Day. And um, Alyssa was a student um, in the crowd at the time. Alyssa's well, also been a guest on <laughs> yes, the show. Yes, she has. It's actually, um, it's a wonderful story. So fast forward quite a few years and, um, you know, I joined the choir at my local parish now in Good Shepherd and I just went to Mass one day and I knew that music ministry was something that I needed and I was missing because I'd lost that spark and that joy in my heart. So. And God's timing is just perfect, isn't it? Um, I went to Mass and the Young Adults Choir was singing at that particular Mass. And I just remember sitting there going, yep, I need to join. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I did. And um, a couple of months later, they'd organise a mentoring session. Um, it was quite a new choir. So I went along and I walk into the room and who is sitting at the end of the table? is Alyssa. Oh, there you go. Wonderful. <laughs> and I walked in and, you know, we're both kind of eyeing each other off. And I sat down. Did you down. recognise each other at this point? I, no, okay. I think Alyssa was, I think, I think both our brains were churning a little bit. And then I realised that I had seen her face in a publication a couple of weeks before that. So that's where I made the connection. And, you know, we got talking and she just, at, at the end, she's like, did you go to Santa Maria? And I said, yes, I did. And, you know, we opened up, had a bit of a conversation about that. And I said, I've actually been back once to talk about my experience at World Youth Day. And she just looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, your speech made me want to go to World Youth Day in oh, Sydney. Really? Was she wow. a student there? Yes, oh, she was a student. Wow. And I just, I just get chills thinking about it yeah. now because, you know, my, you can imagine my shock. Um, you know, 15 years later, yeah. I've just learned that whatever I said at that impacted assembly somebody impacted yes. somebody, yeah. you know, Incredible. and made them want to, you know, grow closer to God. Yeah. Um, 
So that really, um, that definitely gave me a bit of a thrill. You know, I was, I was so pleased. And that night, you know, we both found each other on Facebook, added each other and started talking immediately. And then a couple of months after that, Alyssa um, introduced me to the wonderful Roxanne. And the three of us have been inseparable ever since. And Roxanne's also on this series as well. Yes, she has. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly. And, you know, it was God's perfect timing because we were entering, you know, wow. beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so this was probably end of 2019, early 2020. And, you know, God, I think God knew that um, I needed these women and a sisterhood around me to get through a really tough two years. You know, as every, I don't like to relive it. <laughs> But as everyone knows, you know, everything obviously shut down and Melbourne was tough. We got hit pretty hard, you know, the longest the lockdowns, lockdowns in the yeah. world. So. In the world, yeah. So, you know, I, um, from going to mass and going into the city for work to then all of a sudden be shut down, isolated in your home. And, you know, it, it was a blessing that my husband was still able to go to work because he was an industry that was, you know, in building and construction and they were still allowed to work, so they were essential. So he was able to go out and his routine didn't change so much, but mine changed dramatically. All of a sudden now I had, you know, um, my daughter couldn't go to kinder. Um, so I had to, you know, um, work around that. And then I had to work around working from home pretty much, you know, the, 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 well, the part-time, but full-time. It was such a challenging yeah. time. It really was. It? it really was, you know, and I was so blessed to have my mum and my mother-in-law um, and, you know, to be able to watch the girls during that time. So I definitely had, that was a blessing as well for me. I know that a lot of women struggled to work and have kids at home. Yes. But I, I went through those, that first year was really, really tough mm. for me. You know, you, I, I got absorbed into a lot of, a lot of thing and everyone was just trying to process what was happening and, when is it going to end? And there were so many uncertainties, but then to have Alyssa and Roxanne with me and journeying through me, th well, with me, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we would speak daily. Wow. Um, you know, we would encourage each other, you know, this is not going to last long. You know, there's a reason why God has put us together. We can get through this. We have each other. Wow. Such a gift. Absolutely. It was, you know, um, and I don't think I would have, I don't think I could have lasted or got gotten through the two years without their friendship yes yeah. absolutely so powerful yeah it's extraordinary quite extraordinary how that particular friendship formed so well and it really makes me think you know that meaningful friendships can you share with us about meaningful friendships and particularly what sets a christ-centered friendship apart from another absolutely i think um for us first and foremost it was a, it, well, it was a Christ-centered relationship, yeah. you know, a friendship. We did bond and Christ is the center and still remains so. And I think that's vitally important. Mm. Um, we know that God put us together for a reason. And so, you know, we, um, we make sure that we always thank God and praise God for doing that yeah. Yeah. for us. Um, I think shared values, morals are really important. You know, we lift each other up mm -hmm. and we encourage each other and we love each other very much. You know, we call ourselves the you know, sisters in Christ because we are, you know, I'm not blessed with sisters. Um, so to have them as, um, as my sisters is such a blessing. And I think also, you know, you have to look at the fruits of a friendship as well. Are they producing good fruits? Are they producing bad fruits? You know, I've definitely had friendships in the past where it revolved around gossip and, you know, mm, look yes. at what this person is doing and what that person is doing. But it's definitely not so when you have a meaningful yeah. um, friendship, you know. Mm. You do, you, you, you lift each other up and through the hardships, you know, you encourage each other um, through it. And I just, I just know, you know, through my own hardships, which there were a lot during COVID, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to get through it if it wasn't for no. them, you know, and their prayers yeah. yes. as well, you know. And I think a meaningful relationship, um, you need, you know, the three Ps, the proximity, presence and persistence. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. You know, and we were blessed that we all kind of lived close enough, obviously in Melbourne, but, you know, within 10 minutes of each other. So we saw each other when we could and when we were allowed yeah. and, you know, having that daily chat as well. And we're all really busy in our lives to, you know, Alyssa with her, um, you know, with her gigs and stuff and her work part time, Alyssa with her family and her work part time and myself. You know, it, it is challenging, but we, we persist. We make sure that we do schedule in time, you know, once a fortnight, once a month to, you know, gather at one of our houses yeah, over so a meal. Good. There's always coffee, always coffee <laughs> <laughs> and dessert, you know, and just chat it out, you know. Um, yeah, chat it out. Talk yeah. about things. There's actually a term in web development where you say, 
talk to a rubber ducky <laughs> that's like on your desk. And it's the notion that, you know, when you're trying to work something out in your head, you talk to the rubber ducky and I try and explain it in layman's terms. <laughs> <That's> so, <good. laughs> so, my, so my ladies are like, <laughs> rubber ducky. <laughs> but you know, when you're going through marriage, um, you know, little marriage issues, or you know, you're struggling with par motherhood, parenting, you know, two little girls. So um, you're gonna get those struggles, you know, lack of sleep. To be able to fall back mm -hmm. on two solid friends, you know, to, you know what, Jess, it's gonna be okay, you know. And there's one saying that gets me through is that, you know, I can do all things through Christ. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, who strengthens me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, it's, I, I, yeah, just very blessed to have them mm -hmm. in our lives. But, you know, I think also Aristotle had three types of friendships. It's the utility, pleasure, and the, goods. Um, the, the good, the virtuous. Yes, and we're definitely the virtuous, you know, and that's the perfect friendship, you know. It is. And the good, where you're really willing one another's good and you're exactly. not there to take from each yeah. other or use yeah. each other, but you, it's edifi edifying Absolutely. for one another. And I love that you touch on that edification element of friendship mm -hmm. because that really is what sets, I think, Christ-centred Christ friendships mm -hmm. apart, that we're really drawing one another up. Absolutely. We're pulling each other along on the journey and pointing each other towards Christ all the time. And like you said, we go through all of these struggles yeah. and sometimes you're just having a bad day. And, and I think what COVID did and the lockdowns yeah. for people, and we spoke about this with marriage, but mm -hmm. I think yes. in terms of mm -hmm. just women's mental health, like loneliness is a huge issue for so many women. Yeah. And I know through our sisterhood movement, I'm actually stunned, like I'm blessed by beautiful friendships, but I'm stunned that some women that I've encountered literally couldn't list a single friend mm. that they have. Yes. And it's so sad. And yeah. I think when we're struggling with isolation, we become really lonely, the problems get bigger. Mm. And so I think friendship, meaningful friendship can starve off those pangs of loneliness, yes. isolation Absolutely. and depression. Absolutely. And the flow on effects for me in terms of the broader family Yes. and other people that I connect with are uh, amazing. Yeah. Well, let's face it, like as women, we need to talk. We yes, need we to need to experience, talk. we need to process. Yeah, and, and funnily enough, and I know we were talking about this when we in, in the marriage um, episode, um, that men and women are so different and the way we communicate are different. And uh, often men don't, have the capacity to talk into detail about something. Yes. Whereas, it's really frustrating. You know, <laughs> it is. And we can do that with the women in our lives that can really hear that, the detail mm -hmm. and the deep, those deep desires of our heart. We can be seen in that different way Absolutely. with the women. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think also, you know, when I know that I am talking to them about my hardships, it's not just, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it'll, you'll get over it yes. in a couple of weeks. Or, you know, it's no, it's, it's really, you know, you know, just, you know, you have to either humble yourself and do the right thing. Yes. You know, there's definitely that, that, that the teaching of Christ definitely comes through as well. Um, you know, we're all practicing Catholics and we all share the same goal and that's to get to heaven and to bring as many people with us to heaven. So we definitely lift each other up there. Yeah. So there's you know. that like challenge and accountability Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Speaking yeah. the truth in yes. love. Yeah. And there's that scripture that iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And I think we all need to be forged sometimes in friendship. And friends that will speak truth in love in a yes. way that's compassionate and gentle. Mm -hmm. And it just really calls us on. Yeah, it does. One thing I do notice also about experiencing um, the three of you together, I haven't, ha I haven't had many experiences. <laughs> I've seen you online together and I yeah. love it, but in real life you have this chemistry and you have lots of fun together. We do. Fun. Yes. And I think that's really important, isn't it? Yeah. And it is, you know, and our families, our husbands get along really well yeah, and the kids get along, you know, really well. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't just gained sisterhood, I've gained like another family oh, yeah. really. Yeah. They've extended yes. my family. And this is the knock on effect. Like we know, like I know in our modern culture, people are busy, women have gone back to work. There's that disintegration really yes. of a lot of community and connection with women. And, you know, back in the day, women used to go down to the creek or the river to wash clothes yes. and, and they would talk and they'd process and they'd come back home. And it's just such a beautiful gift. And I'm wondering, you know, it's a so biblical true. concept mm -hmm. and there's so many stories of sisterhood in the Bible. Can you think of any that really resonate with you that you've sort of looked to as a model? I think the visitation. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. You know, love thy neighbour. Um, pretty much, you know, I just, when I'm praying the rosary and I'm thinking, thinking about meditating on um, that mystery, I, 
just think, you know, Mary has just found out that she's pregnant and have found out that her cousin is pregnant and she just doesn't hesitate to get up, not think of herself, walks thousands of miles <laughs> on foot, you know, and to go and help her cousin, you know. And um, Mary literally brought Jesus to Elizabeth, you know, and she, people would have encountered Jesus growing in her on her journey to Elizabeth. And I think that's also what we're called to do as well as women, you know, is to um, be a light in the world and represent Jesus here on earth and do as Mary did, you know, carry Jesus mm. and to, to others, to others yeah. as and we meet the along the way. ordinariness of life. Absolutely. Visiting people, taking meals to people, loving people. Absolutely. Yeah, just the, yeah. 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 And, you know, I just think, you know, what were they talking about? I know. When they get there, right, you know, were they, you know, Talking about, you know, the hardships, you know, St. Joseph's confusion when he found out what was going on and Zechariah's distrust, you know, did they sit there with their feet up after a long day? And, you know, I'm sure they would have prayed together and, you know, given thanks to the Lord together. And um, they, they would have had that sisterhood. They would have sat there and um, had those conversations just like we would today. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I think there's so many women, like we're blessed because we've encountered sisterhood, but there yeah. are women, as I mentioned, who haven't got those connections like what can people do just to I guess if you've got this woman sitting at home with two little kids she's moved to a new city she doesn't know anyone like what does a woman in her position do first of all for um, me what worked pray <laughs> because that's definitely I prayed a lot um, for, for did you pray for God to bring people into your life I prayed to get that joy back that I'd lost and I think the timeline of that is basically I've prayed about that, knew that music ministry was what I was missing out on, went to mass, and then through the music ministry is where I met Alyssa. Yes, there's little breadcrumbs. Yeah. It, absolutely, you know, there was a trail that God was leading me on to find to find it. So that definitely a beautiful bonus um, to, to that journey. Um, I think, you know, pray, get involved um, in your local parish. I mean, that's what I did. And then look at the fruits and, the, you know, the wonderful thing that happened to me, um, you know, also, Karen, the Sisterhood Conference, absolutely, you know, where you're in a big room with like-minded women. Yes, can meet people there. Absolutely, you know, um, even on, you know, thinking about prayer groups and things like that. And if you can't, just get out there, maybe start your own. So Jess, help us out. There are women who are sitting at home, like we've expressed mm. how we are so blessed by sisterhood and those connections. But I know through the sisterhood movement, there's been women that have come up to me saying they literally don't have a single mm. friend. Yep. And it just breaks my heart because it's, it's so sad. So sad. So what can women do if they find themselves in that position where they just don't know where to go? They've, think about the woman who's moved to a new city with young kids stuck at home. Coming out of the pandemic, what can she do to find meaningful connection? I think first of all, prayer, pray, because that's what I did. <laughs> um, get involved in your local parish because you meet wonderful people. And that's obviously how I came to meet Alyssa and everything else um, has just flourished from there. The Sisterhood Conference, absolutely, you know, in a big room filled with like-minded women um, is definitely a top thing. And if you can't find anything, start your own. Yeah. I think. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's a good Absolutely. one. I yeah, put the invitation husband, out. Husband used to say that. He used to say, if you yeah. can't find it, maybe you're meant to create it. So. Yeah. Oh, it's been so fantastic having you on this episode and sharing this topic with us. Yeah, the, your, the sisterhood that you have created um, with Jess, uh, with, sorry, not Jess, with Rox, <laughs> Roxanne <laughs> and Alyssa is really amazing and inspiring. And I think a lot of women would really, you know, desire a friendship like that. It's mm -hmm. very special. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, we're going to end today with some burning questions, questions okay. that women carry in their heart. <laughs> yeah. They're quick questions and mm -hmm. we just get, present them to you and we get your quick response. So we're going to shoot with a couple of those questions. Okay. So the first question that we're going to ask you is what can women look for? How can you add value in your relationships? I think um, being there for each other all the time through the ups and the downs, you know, um, service. I think be of service um, to others too. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, they're great. Yep. What qualities do you see in a woman that you want to create a sisterhood or friendship with? I think they need to share the same values and morals that I mm. have as well. Um, you know, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to create sisterhood if you don't share, you don't have those yeah, same, you know, thoughts. Uh, for me, I definitely um, 
a love for Jesus yeah. as well. And just be willing to walk with me through life, through the ups and the downs, not just the joys, but also be with me um, through, the, through the lows as well. Yeah. Last one is what one practical thing can women do this week mm -hmm. to create intentional community and sisterhood? I think just actively look, um, you know, go online. Um, have a look at what um, is available to you in your city or around your area, in your parish. Um, and also I think it's really important to write a list of what qualities are you looking for in a friendship so that you can be a meaningful friendship. That's great. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jess. It's been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in today's episode. We really hope and pray that this has been an enriching conversation. It's invited you to really mm. reflect on your friendships and the relationships in your life. I really want to encourage you that if you are struggling in this area of friendship, to really begin, as Jess said, to start to pray and to ask the Lord to bring those friendships and those sisters in the Lord into your life and to then be really proactive to go out in search of those friendships. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Turn back towards God. Rise up.